Dear students, this is a short video to help you research and attain reading material, making use of Google Scholar and the UNISA library. Now, whether you are starting out in a module and would need to gain an understanding of the concepts and topics of the assignments, or whether you are starting a full-scale literature review, the process that I will show you now will help and will stay pretty much the same. Remember, on a postgraduate level, lecturers no longer supply you with all of the reading material that you need to work through on a topic. At best, you can expect a list of reading to help you get started, but in every case, you will have to find your own sources, evaluate their appropriateness, and eventually use them as applicable in your writing. Oftentimes, it's hard to get your hands on some good reading material that is trustworthy and academic. Not to worry, however, in this video, I will show you the process that I follow when I start on any new research project. It has not let me down yet. Okay, so to start off, you go to the usual Google page. I recommend making use of Chrome as search engine. Once on the Google page, you click on this little waffle at the top right hand side. Under the options given, look for the Google Scholar option. If you do not see it, you might have to click on the More Options link until it does appear. If you are not making use of Chrome as a search engine and you do not have this little waffle that I talked about, you can also just type in Google Scholar in the search bar. However you get there, you will see that the normal Google page changes to a Google Scholar page. Now Google Scholar utilizes all of the database capacity of a normal Google page, but now emits all search results that are not from academic origins. Herein, the search results from Google Scholar will only be from research articles, research books, and university and college institutional repositories. Okay, let's give it a whirl. Now, let's say I want to do some research on the stakeholder theory. I would start, just like in any other Google search, by typing my search phrase into the search bar. As you can see, the search results that it yields are all scholarly and academic works. No general or corporate web pages and no non-academic wikis or blogs are given here. Now, before we access one of these sources, there are a few things that I would like you to take note of. Firstly, I always start my searches off with a blanket or a general phrase that is not yet too specific. Like in this case, I have just stakeholder theory. As my review of literature progresses and I read up on the topic more, my search phrases might become more specific. For example, eventually I might search for something specific regarding the stakeholder theory. Like here, where I search specifically for the concept of the separation fallacy within the stakeholder theory. Keeping your search general at the beginning, however, puts you in a better position to start your reading off on a good, broad and encompassing search. Another good reason for keeping your search broad at the onset is because you will be in a better position to ascertain seminal authors and seminal sources or seminal texts in this way. Seminal sources tend to be the major studies on your topic. These are researchers, thinkers or authors that everyone discusses, whether or not current research agrees with their findings. They're often the instigators that opened up avenues of study within a specific topic. Now, as you can see from the list here, a few names keep popping up for the stakeholder theory. Some of them are R.E. Freeman, Donaldson and Jensen. Now, you can see that they are the authors associated with this topic most often, and this might mean that they are seminal in this research context. A further way to see if a source is seminal is to see how often it is cited. This citation count here refers to the amount of times that other authors have referenced this source. As you can see, 
It is very often in these cases. Secondly, after you have your seminal authors and you have a good general understanding of the topic, you would want to refine your search to studies within the last decade. Remember, it is not enough in any review of literature to only look at the seminal studies because oftentimes our understanding of the world in general and our understanding of a topic or a specific phenomenon has progressed or moved on from the initial understanding that was instigated by a seminal author or a seminal study. For this reason, we would want to also research what is currently or recent, recently being reported on. For this, you move to the left-hand side of your screen. As you can see, you can enter a specific date range. I always take the custom range and then enter the last 10 or 11 years as my search bracket. Now, you can see that only sources published in the last decade or so show up in the results. I can now start to see what is being written on, on this topic now and by whom. Good, now let's say that I want to access one of these sources. Naturally, I just click on it as per usual and go to the web page where the link is stored. For a book, you will generally go straight through to the source directly. For journal articles, however, a more cumbersome process needs to be followed. When you click on the link to take you to a journal article, you will land on the journals page. In all cases, you will want to access the full PDF version of the article, as this is the full version as it appears in the journal, complete with page numbers to complete your referencing. So, look for a link to the PDF of the article. Once you click to access the PDF version of the article, one of two things could happen. You could either go straight through to the article directly, or you could be stopped and asked to sus subscribe to the journal for a fee. If you are on one of UNISA's campuses, as I am, and accessing the article via UNISA's servers, you will go directly to the article because UNISA has licenses to view almost all major journals' works. If you are working from home or anywhere else off campus, however, you will not go straight through to the article because Google Scholar has no way of knowing that you are a paying UNISA student. In the case where you are asked to pay for a journal article, therefore, you will have to follow another route. On the one side of your screen, keep the particulars of the article that you would like to access open. On another part of your screen, or in another window, you open up the UNISA library page. Once there, you click on the Find eJournal link. As you can see, a page opens up where you can search for the journal. Please note, you are now searching for the journal, not yet the article. The easiest way is to type or copy and paste the journal's name in the search bar here. Then you click on that journal. At this stage, you might be asked to enter your UNISA username and password. This is just the same username and password that you would enter for my UNISA. Once done, you will see that for most journals on the UNISA library site, various databases usually gathers that journal's article. Look for the one that your article will be covered in by having a look at the time frame and then clicking on the appropriate one. Usually, the first page that opens up is a page that gives you the current issue of the journal. You will have to look at archived issues in most cases, however, so look for a link that will take you back to previous issues, previous years, etc. Firstly, you will find the correct year, then the correct volume of the journal, and the correct issue number. Once you have that, the specific journal issue appears and lists all of the articles published in that issue. Now you search for the title of your article and open up the PDF from here.
Okay, so now you can don download and save the PDF, print it, or do whatever you want with it from here. This is how I access most articles and general academic resources that I cite in my research. I hope that it helps you to complete your work in a timeless and academic manner. Please do remember that we have a website that shows you how to cite and paraphrase the sources that you do find. Have a look at my UNISA if you need to see more of this and or if you need the direct link to access it. I wish you all the best with your literature reviews and hope you will find it as fulfilling as I do.